Hello, in this lesson, I'm going to review how to uh, construct a bar graph and how to read a bar graph. Okay, uh, this is section 2.1 of your textbook. So a random sample of 1010 Santa Monica residents were asked, how do you think we should pay for road maintenance? And the result of the stories are summarized in the table below. Now, A, use the space provided, convert this table to a, a relative frequency table. B, construct a relative frequency bar graphs for this data set. Remember to completely label the graph, neatness, and format count. Round relative frequencies to three decimal place. Okay, so the two parts of the question. One, I'm going to uh, construct a relative frequency uh, table. Now, relative frequency is equal to uh, the frequency over the total, right? So first, we need to find a total. So we add up the frequency 250 plus 567 plus 122 plus 71. You'll get 1,010, which is the sample size of that, right? So it's 1,010. Now to find the relative frequency, we're going to use the frequency, which is 250 over the total, which is 1,010. And I'm going to round it to three decimal place, which is 0 0.2. For a, I'm gonna do the same thing for each of the categories. Okay, so for the second one is approximately 0 0.561, and the next one is 0 0.121. Next one is 0 0.070. Now, when you add up all the all the uh, relative frequency together, you should get approximately one, because the total probability is one here. Okay. Now let's construct. A, ro a relative frequency bar graph. Okay, the keyword here is a bar graph. Know that bar graphs is they mean there's a gap between each bar, and that is for uh, categorical data or qualitative data. All right, let's do it. Now notice that for my table, uh, for my relative frequency, I notice the highest point five six one. So I'm gonna range it close to zero here, closer to zero. To a number up to close to uh, 0.6. So when I divide my fre uh, relative frequency, I need to note space, you know, scale it in a way where it will show the maximum and the minimum, and you know, use the space uh, nicely. So let's do it. So I'm gonna start up with zero for the relative frequency in the vertical axis, and then I'm gonna increment by 0.1, right? So we'll get to 0.6 max. All right, let's do it now. Before I start, for more information on how to scale a number line, please look at the integrated review uh, scale of number lines. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna start with zero. I'm gonna in, I'm gonna up to po total is point six. Come put my point six here, and I'm gonna divide in half again. Each half here, I'm gonna divide into three parts. So this is three parts. I would suggest you use a ruler to do it on your when you you know on a paper. Okay, so this is a total point six. So each one is point, uh, point one here. Point one zero. This is point two. This is zero point three. This is zero point four. This is zero point five, and this is zero point six. Next, this is my frequency. My this is my relative frequency. That's a vertical axis. This is called relative. Let me label them. Relative frequency. Now, in a horizontal axis, that's where we uh, do the categories. Now, total here have new property tax, new gas tax, new sales tax, and other method. The total of four categories. So I'm gonna space them, you know, in a way where each one have equal space. So I have four categories. So let me do the maximum up to this one here. Okay. So I'll divide this into four parts. And with four ticks, okay. All right. Next, I'm gonna look for the categories. So notice the first category is uh, 0.24a, approximately 2.25, uh, right? So I'm gonna grab each one. So 0.25 and 0.25 up a little bit under 2.5. Let me grab it. So under two. 
So now this is the halfway, right? You can even mark each one and then to make it halfway. Let's say this is 0 0.15, this is 0 0.25, this is 0 0.35, 0 0.45, 0 0.55. You can even mark, but I don't have to label them further, otherwise going to be confusing, too much labeling. So let's just do it. So if this one is 0 0.248, so approximately 0 0.25. So I'm going to label the height up to 0 0.25. Okay. And that is my, oh, let me write on the line. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw a little bar around this bar. I'm going to draw it on the left-hand side. So my bar. I'm going to do the half side of the, the total. So my bar will be, I will say again on your paper, use a, a ruler or use your ID, some of the straight edge to make a, a nicer bar. So this is the first category, which is the new property tax. So this is new property tax, label them, new property tax, taxes, okay, and I'm just doing a short here, and then you can even uh, draw, highlight your bars, you know, or shade it, that's the first category, the second category is the new gas tax, that's approximately 0.561, so 0.56 I would say, a little bit over uh, 5 5. So again, I'm gonna draw my bar off. Oh, again, you wanna make sure it's a straight line. Let me from top to bottom. It's a little joy, 0.5. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be consistent here. I'm gonna do halfway between the length, the width of the, my bar. I know it's a little easier for me to draw this way. Okay. Alright, that's the second category, and that's a new property tax. I can shade them again, mark it. Again, I want to make sure here. So, this is size of the bar. Again, notice that I want to size the bar to be consistent and the space as well, so that way it doesn't distract the reader. So, label it that's the new property tax. So, new proper wait the first category new property tax like a new gas tax okay make sure labor correctly gas taxes All right now the third category is the sales tax so that is uh, 0.12 approximately sales tax okay 0.12 again 0.15 is top way between uh 0.1 and 0.2 so 1 2 should be a little bit lower a little bit more than 0.1 So this is just a little bit more than over 0.1. And again, you want to space your, make your bars as about the same size. And okay, I'm going to show you my bar. Okay, and label them, that's sales tax. Okay, uh, new sales taxes. Right. The last category is uh, other method that is about 0 0.07. This right, so it has to be under 0 0.1 there, 0 0.07, more than halfway. Okay. 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 And this other method. Now, this completes my uh, bar graph for the uh, new sales tax. Again, be careful with the spacing and the size of your bars and make sure uh, they're all equally spaced out. Now, part C, is your bar graph a petrol chart? Okay, let's review what a petrol chart is. A petrol chart, basically, you, your, your bar is from highest to the lowest, from left to right. Now, notice that my bar here is not the highest to the lowest. I have the highest in the second category, which is uh, gas tax. So therefore, this is not a petrol chart. Now, to make this into a petrol chart, I basically need to rearrange it so that the highest one, the first category will be new gas tax, second category will be new property tax, and the third category will be new uh, sales tax followed by other method. So write in complete sentence. Let's re-explain that like that. 
So I say this is not a petrol chart. Answer the question. This is not a petrol chart. Okay. Do not just say yes or no here. Okay. Always write it out. Not a petrol chart since write a reason. Since the bars, the bar uh, graph, okay, is not uh, draw in decreasing order, draw in which is from high to lowest, right? Decreasing order. Now to make this into a petrol chart, I will be rearranging the categories from the highest to the lowest. So rearranging, we arrange the bars or the cat for the for each category, the categories, bars for the right in decreasing order. The squeezing order, right? Uh, here, I'm gonna rearranging the bar. The fourth category should be new, uh, pop, uh, new pop, new gas tax, gas taxes, which is the highest group, followed by new property tax. Taxes, and then followed by new sales tax. Taxes, and then then the other category, other method. Right. Now in the next example, I wanna uh, review how to read a bar graph. Now this is side by side bar graph below indicate the percentage of Respondents to a survey by college enrollment at uh, Vanderbilt University. You, so this is 2006 and 2007. Now notice that the dark blue here, the first one is this is 2006. This one is 2006, where the second category is 2007 for in the same school, right? So again, it's highlighted by color. Now use the graph to answer the following questions. A. In 2006, what percentage of the respondents identify themselves as from the P body school. Okay, look at each one of them here. Indicate your answer is in a full sentence. Okay, let's look for the category that's a P um P body school. Okay, P body is right here. Again, I'm looking for 2006. 2006, that is the second bar. And the second bar that is 25%. So to answer the question in a complete sentence, I would say in 2006, uh, twenty-seven percent of the respondents identify themselves as from the P body school, right? So write the whole thing in a complete sentence. Write it out, right? So I'm gonna write this one. So in two thousand and six, twenty-seven percent of the respondents. Identify themselves as from the P body school. Okay. Now, the next question, I mean, it says. Uh, between 2006 and 2007, did the percentage of Bel Air school increase or decrease? Okay, I want to look for the category. Is it increase or decrease? Notice that it's from 11% and increase to, to a 13%. So therefore, there's an increase and an increase of 2%. So what was the increase of the 2%? Indicate your answer in a sentence. Again, between, now I'm going to write a sentence. Between, answer the question. I would say uh, between 2006 and 2007, the 
per percentage. from the Belair school increase increases from uh, increase by again 13 percent 11 to 13 so 13 minus 11 that's two percent increase by two percent in this case. Now, Part C, in 2006, was which, which school had the second and the third highest potent percentage response? What was the difference in their response rate? Indicate your answer in the full sentence. Again, I'm looking at 2006. I'll look for the second and third highest, right? Second and third. Okay, let's go up back to the graph. So 2006, I'm on the second and third highest. Well, notice that kind of in decreasing order here, the bars, Patrick kind of in decreasing order. I want to look for the second and the third highest, which is uh, 27% and 18%. So the, differences will, so the differences will be 9%, 27 minus 18. So that will be for Peabody and engineering. So let's write that, all right? So the school, so the school, uh, let's do the school are is uh, P body and engineering. Let's, right. So let's write it. So we we'll say um, the second and the third highest percentage respondents are P school and engineering, and the percentage are twenty seven percent and twenty two percent respectively, and the differences between these two uh, group is nine percent all right and here i'm not gonna write this thing out so just write it out in the sentence as mentioned now in part d let's do part d if a total of seven thousand and five hundred and four students responded to the survey in 2007 determine how many of them were from each of the following school run your answer to a new integer okay so the total here is seven uh let me write out total in the survey in 2007 is 7,504. Now let's find out the percentage of either category. So 2007, let's let me look at 2007 is the skin uh, bar in each group. So I'm looking for um, uh, art and science. Art and science, the first one. Let me erase and box them again. So art and science is 32%. And I'm looking at next one is Peabody, that is 25%, followed by um, engineering, that is 22%. So that means I need to find 32% of the totals in survey, 25% of it and 22% of it. So let me write it down. Okay. So I need, uh, for this one, I need, uh, wait, <laughs> I forgot already, let's put it up again. So 32%, right? let me go down. So I need, um, a third, let me write it out. So 32% for this one. Peabody is 25%. And then engineering is 22%. Okay. That means I need to find 32% of 7,504. Let me put that. I want 32% of that. I want 25% of 7,504 and then 22% of that. Now, to find percentage of the total of the, 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 that uh, number here, we multiply. So I want to find, for example, let me do it one here. Say I, I want 32% of 7,504. Now this off here in math here tells me to multiply. But when I multiply, I need to convert the percentage to decimal or proportion. In, all right, so let's do it. To find that, I will do 7,504 7, oh, 7, here. Make sure I write it. So that is equal to... 7,504 times the 32% in decimal, which is moving the decimal left twice, or 32 over 100, that is 0 0.32. When I multiply it, I'll get 2,401. So the fourth color was 2,401. And you can do the same thing for each of the following. I can do the same thing for the second category, which is 7,504 times 0 0.25. 
and which gonna give you me uh, 1,876. So 1,876. Again, then all these can be done using your calculator. And then the third category, 22%, 7,004 times 0 0.22, and that is equal to 1,650.88. But notice that I need to round it to the nearest integer. So therefore, I'm looking at one digit below. In this case, A. A is a number between five and more, greater or equal to five. So therefore, round the previous digit is zero to one. So round approximately to 1,651. So 1,651. So this completes our lesson for review of bar graphs. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you, uh, talk to you next time.